everybody, it's Miss Smith. I'm sorry I'm wearing the same clothes as yesterday. <laughs> um, I'm actually making videos all on the same day. So um, I actually just got finished with yesterday's video and now I'm making today's. Um, tomorrow, I'm about to do them all back to back anyway. Um, so today I wanna to talk about how to do math with scientific notation because there's some different rules. Um, some of you may have been taught this before, may have been taught it differently from a different teacher, and that's fine. Um, but I, again, when I teach these things, I like to teach them to you in ways that work every single time because sometimes the shortcuts don't always work. So the way I'm gonna teach you today works every single time. And it's something that we I developed um, a student came with this idea about six or seven years ago when I was still teaching in Texas, and it works every single time, um, and it's great. But, you know, you talk to another chemistry teacher, they'll probably have no idea what the heck you're talking about because it's something that I created with another student one day. The student had a great idea, and I just ran with it, and it works. Um, so today we're going to talk about math with scientific notation. Now, you do need to write this down in your notebook. This one is one of the hardest concepts to master in this unit. Please make sure that you are asking me questions. If you don't know, ask me, okay? Find me on Google Chat. All right, so let's go into our new So I'm gonna make a new page here. Now this is math with scientific notation. Okay, so first I want to talk about addition and subtraction. So the rule for addition and subtraction is actually the same. Okay, so the rule for addition and subtraction is make exponents Gotta make them the same. All right, so I'm gonna give you a couple of problems. Um, let's write these out real quick. 1.2 times 10 to the fifth. That's a five, not an S. Let me try again. Five plus 5.35 times 10 to the sixth. Okay. Uh, let me give you one more. Let's do one more. 6.91 times 10 to the negative second plus 2.4 times 10 to the negative third. All right, so I want to do one with positive exponents, one with negative exponents because actually the negative exponents that you're, this in the second example, this is where a lot of people mess up just because they forget you know, adding with negatives is a little bit different than adding with positive numbers. So I will review that here in just a minute. So let's go in how to do this. Okay, so the rule for doing addition subtraction with scientific notation is to make the exponents the same. So that's the first question you need to ask yourself is are my exponents the same? Okay, so let's look at this. I've got a five and I've got a six, okay? Of course they're not the same. I sure hope that you would notice that by now. Um, so no, they're not the same, all right? So I need to make them the same. Now here's this weird rule that we came up with. I developed a couple of years ago. A student had an idea and I ran with it and it works every single time. But the problem with this rule is that you have to follow it directly every single time because if you don't, then the rule won't work, okay? Here's the rule. Now, I'm going to put it on a different page, just because I'm running out of room. I'm sure you've got more room on your page. But the rule is called Lars. Okay, and you're probably like, uh oh, uh, all right, Miss Smith, you look crazy, but okay. All right, <clears throat> I trust me, this, like, if you go through my notes, when I make notes doing work with these, you'll see this written on my notes. I use this. It works, okay? So, left, L stands for left, A is for add. R is for right, and left is subtract. Now, yesterday I talked about how when you're moving decimals, you don't go left, you don't go right, you do with, is it a big number, is it a small number when dealing with exponents, okay? 
The reason why I say that is because this rule, the large rule, deals with left and right, and it's backwards compared to what we did yesterday. So if I'm teaching you how to move a decimal, um, I don't want to use left and right because you'll get it confused with large. Large is only when you're doing math functions, okay? That's the only time you you lose use large is with math functions. All right. So I'm going to write this up here. And you'll see this written all over my stuff. Okay, so let's work these problems. So anytime I'm doing these questions, uh, if I was doing them on a whiteboard and you were sitting in front of me, I would ask you, do you want to make them both five? Do you want to make it both six? And, you know, a few of you would yell out answers. But really, it doesn't matter. As long as you follow Lars and you do it correctly, it doesn't matter. You can make them both five. You can make them both six. It really doesn't matter. Okay, but... I have chosen to make them both um, five. So this is five here. I need to make six into five. Now, this is just basic math. What do you do to six to make it five? You subtract one. So I'm gonna put a little minus one up top. Now, remember, the exponents are where your decimal is. So if you change the exponent, that means you need to change the decimal where the decimal is. So that's what Lars's comes in, is knowing where to move your decimal. So if I subtracted one, you know, I subtracted one right here, then I need to move my decimal. So I subtracted one, so that means I need to go to the right. Now, I subtracted one, so I go to the right one place. So now I'm going to rewrite this. I'm going to do 1.2 plus 53.5. Now, I'm kind of doing two things here. Um, something that you may have noticed and you're like, wait a minute, Smith, you're jumping ahead. Okay, this is my main number. This is the real number, um, the one that actually does the, all the heavy, heavy lifting, heavy work. Okay, here is the big number here, the main number here. I'm actually pulling those out and I'm going to combine them. But I have to make my exponents the same first before I can pull them out and combine them. And that's what I did in this step as I pulled them out. But I changed my decimal before I pulled it down. Now all you do after that is you just do times 10 to the fifth. You made them both five, you keep it at five. Don't do anything crazy. You made them both five, keep it five. Don't change a bunch of stuff. Okay, so all you do now is just put this in the calculator and that you can, I can do that in my head. That is 54.7 times 10 to the fifth. Now, here's the problem with this answer. If you notice the decimal has two numbers to the left of it. Well, that's not correct scientific notation, okay? You can use Lars for this, all right? So I know that my decimal needs to be moved one place to the left, okay? Well, here, left means I need to add. So I need to add one to my exponent, because remember, I moved the decimal, so that means that I need to change my exponent because I'm moving my decimal. So the answer is 5.47 times 10 to the sixth and that's it you're done okay so let me show you another example now the negative exponents are a little tricky okay so watch yourself it is basic math um, when you're changing the exponents so watch yourself if you don't trust yourself to do basic math put it in the calculator there's no judgment nobody's going to judge you okay trust me i was a full-blown adult and i put two plus five in the calculator it happens okay sometimes you don't trust your own brain it happens all right Sometimes you have brain farts and you forget things. Okay, anyway, use your calculator, it's your friend. All right, moving on. So, this is addition. So that means that I need to make my exponents the same. So right now my exponents are not the same. I have one that's a negative two and I have one that's a negative three. So I want to make both of mine negative two. That's just my choice. You could make them both negative three, just make sure you use large correctly. Um, that's fine if you wanna make them both negative three whatever that's fine just make sure you're using Lars correctly you're following what it says okay so I want to make mine both negative two so that means I've got to do something to this negative three to make it a negative two so here we go basic math what do you do to negative three to make it negative two most of you would say well subtract one remember these are negative okay so technically you need to add one that's where a lot of people mess up is they forget that it's backwards. Well, there we go. Okay, you need to add one. 
So since I'm adding one here, and I'm adding, okay, that means I need to go to the left. So I'm going to go here. So again, I'm going to bring these numbers down and combine them. 6.91 plus 0 0.24 times 10 to the negative second. I've made them both negative 2, so I'm just going to bring it down. All right, now 6.91 plus 0.24 is 7.15 time to the negative second and that's it it's done okay problem is finished and you didn't even you may have used, used a calculator for this part but the rest of it because I haven't taught you how to put exponents in the calculator yet this is not hard you're fine it's just a lot of steps to remember so if you're having issues remembering what steps to do it would be good to have this video up while you're working your problems and you can go through I mean, walking you through the steps again. You can pause the video. You can work on it. You can ask me a question during the video. Just send me a little message on the Google Hangout. Um, but if you need to replay the video 15 times to get it, do it. Do what you got to do. Okay, so I taught you addition and subtraction. They both had the same rule for addition and subtraction. Multiplication and division each have their own rules. So I'm going to do multiplication and then I'll do division. All right, so the rule for multiplication is you want to add your exponents. Okay, you do that every single time. You just add your exponents together. Before we, when we did addition subtraction, you would make your exponents the same, keep them the same, bring them down. Okay, not on this one. All right, this multiplication and division are actually much easier than addition and subtraction. So. Oh, excuse me. Oh. Okay. So, let me give you a couple of examples here. These examples will be great to put in your notebook. Okay. And I just realized that I did not do a subtraction problem here okay with uh, addition and subtraction is exactly the same as addition All right the only difference would be this symbol here so instead of adding them together to get 7.15 you would subtract them okay so whatever this says here you bring it down alright exponents the whole process for the exponents works exactly the same okay so that's why I'm really not showing you a subtraction problem if you really need me to show you a subtraction problem just let me know I don't mind alright so there's one multiplication example. Let me give you another one. Let's do 6.0 times 10 to the third times 1.5 times 10 to the negative second. Okay, ooh, tricky, tricky. One's positive, one's negative. Don't worry, we can handle it. Not a big deal. All right, so our goal this time is to add the exponents together. That's only for multiplication. That's the only one you do this on. So I'm going to pull my main numbers out. So 4.3 times 2. Remember, whatever you do here, you also do here. All right, so 4.2 times 3. Now, let's do the exponents. We're going to do 8 plus 6. And so this, when you show your work, you need this is a step you need to show. Okay, I need to see this. If you're not showing me this, um, you're not technically showing your work. I've got to see this part right here. This is also really good to show as well. I'm looking for both of those things, but I'm really looking for this, that you added those together like that. All right, so 4.3 times 2 is 8.6, and then 8 plus 6 is 14, and that's it. That one's done. Next question. All right, so I'm going to pull out my main numbers, so 6 times 1.5. Remember, whatever you do here goes there. Times 10, this is multiplication, so that means we are adding our exponents. 3 plus negative 2. Again, I think there's some practice problems that I'm going to give you a little bit, you know, in one of your assignments for today. And it gets really confusing because it's like negative 1 minus negative 7 or something like that. So, and some of you forget the whole keep change change thing. Look, just put it in your calculator. Just trust the calculator. It'll be fine. Nobody's judging you. Just put it you'll be okay. All right. Um, 
Now, 6 times 1.5 is 9 times 10. Now, 3 plus negative 2 is 1. Okay, and that's it. It's finished. All right, last one is division. Okay, the rule for division is to subtract the exponents. All right, a couple of examples. And then I'm going to do a, uh, a challenge question at the end. Let's see if you can, you can do it as well. Okay, example 7.8 times 10 to the third. 1.2 times 10 to the fourth. All right, now I'm going to pull out these big numbers first. So 7.8 divided by 1.2 times 10. Now remember you're subtracting exponents, so 3 minus 4. So the one that's on top goes in the calculator first, goes in your parentheses first, so 3 minus 4. So 7.8 divided by 1.2 is 6.5. 3 minus 4 is negative 1. And that's it. That's it for that question. So let me give you one more and then I'll do a challenge one. 8.1 times 10 to the negative second divided by 9.0 times 10 to the second. All right, this one's a little tricky because it's got a negative. One of the exponents has a negative. Okay, so again, I'm going to pull this out. I'm going to pull this out. So I'm going to do 8.1 divided by 9 times 10, negative 2 minus 2. Okay, so 8.1 divided by 9 is 0 0.9. Now negative 2 minus 2 is negative 4. Now what's wrong with this question, with this answer, is this is not in correct scientific notation. So I actually need to move my decimal one place to the right. And here's Lars again. Here's how you know if you're moving your decimal, use Lars. So I'm moving my decimal one place to the right. So that means that I need to subtract. So that's going to be minus 1 on there. So it's point, well, excuse me, it's 9.0 now times 10 to the negative fifth because negative 4 minus 1 is negative 5. Okay, now let me give you a practice question. I'm going to go ahead and write this down. This would be good for you to work out in your notebook. What I want you to do is I want you, after I write this down, you get it written down in your notebook. I want you to pause the video and see if you can do this without my help. And I'll give you a hint before you can get started just to kind of get you started on this. Excuse me, 1.8 times 10 to the negative second. All right, here's the hint. Combine these first and then divide. Okay, so go ahead and pause the video now. All right, so I said to combine the bottom first. So I'm going to put this on. I'm going to do 6.48 times 10 to the fifth. And I'm going to start doing my work down here, 2.4 times 1.8 times 10 to 4 plus negative 2. Okay, so here's how you show your work. It's just like I was doing a multiplication problem. So 2.4 times 1.8, okay, and that's going to be 4 plus negative 2. So I'm going to simplify the bottom. I'm going to come down here, next step, this is going to be 4.32 times 10, so 4 plus negative 2 is 2, okay, so now I'm starting to get to where I can actually divide now, okay, so I'm going to pull my main numbers out. 6.48 divided by 4.32 times 10, 5, I'm dividing, so 5 minus 2. Okay, so you simplify that, you get 1.5 times 10 to the third, and that's it. All right, so if you are having uh, issues, well, if you need a calculator, let me know. Send me a message. Um, if you don't have one, I hopefully... Um, you have gotten one because the calculators that I have are those weird ones that only have one line to display and, and it's just, 
anyway, um, hopefully you were able to find one. If you don't have one, then I can, you know, schedule you to get one from the school. Um, I mean, you could use your phone calculator. Um, you could, you know, I know on iPhones, if you turn it sideways, it has a little bit more allowance and the screen's a little bit bigger. But um, anyway, just if you need a calculator, let me know. Uh, maybe I can arrange something. Maybe we can get you a little bit better calculator. Maybe I can find some good ones. And it's not those one-line display ones, but... I mean, the, the one-line display ones would work, but anyway, if you need a calculator, let me know. I'll make it happen. All right, good luck, everybody.